but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ's at his coming. Then come at the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule, all authority, and power. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. So far, our journey through exploring end-time prophecy have been an eye-opener. I am glad that the gospel of the kingdom is here to be heard by all people. The gospel of truth is definitely setting many people free, as well as removing religious strongholds that was placed on the mind of the remnant. The Most High want His people to know exactly what will happen in the end times, as well as in the order it will take place. Religion have buried the truth under falsehoods. Deception runs the beast system. Satan is the father of lies. There's absolutely no truth in him. The scriptures in the authorized Bible confirm this truth about Satan. Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie... He speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. The beast system is Satan's kingdom in the physical realm. The beast culture is led by workers of iniquity that serve the Satans. The earth is in the hands of the wicked. The times of the Gentiles is the time given for the sinners to rule. The kings of the earth are controlled by the Satans who are princes in their nations. There's no truth in the beast system. Lies are the Satan's native language. The doctrines taught to our people in religion are doctrines of devils. No matter how good the doctrines you heard over the years coming from the pulpits of wicked pastors in religion sound, they are doctrines of devils. Remember, Satan's imitations have a form of godliness but deny the power of the Most High. Israelites and indigenous black people all over the world, we cannot continue in the doctrines of devils taught to us in the beast religion. The time have come for us to let the gospel of truth to transform our mind. We must allow the most high to renew the spirit of our mind. That ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts and be renewed in the spirit of your mind as a people, we've been indoctrinated with multiple doctrines of devils from religion that falsify end-time prophecy. The Satans through religion told the people fairy tales to get the people to bow down to worship them. The Satans promised through religion that we would be raptured away before the Great Tribulation. The Satans made many people believe Jesus took the sins of the world away. The people who accept the doctrines of devils as truth Satan deceived them into believing they would not be held accountable for their sins. Satan led many people to believe when the Most High judged the nations, they will be in heaven watching everyone who didn't accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior suffer. Those are the promises the Satans made to many people in the religion called Christianity in exchange for salvation. Satan can't fulfill the promises he made. Satan even deceived some Israelites in the awakening by getting them to repeat and enforcing the doctrines of devils to the Israelites returning to serve the Father. I am glad that the remnant is hearing the truth in the awakening by the people the Most High chose to show himself strong through. The Most High have sent the truth into the world to sanctify his people with an ear to hear. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Only the truth of the Most High's words can make us free. The Satans through religion spread a lot of lies into the world. 
The lies told by the Satans gave the people who are being deceived by them false hope. Israelites, that is why the Most High, the Father, sent the spirit of truth into the world to expose the lies told in religion, as well as to steer the people in the right direction. A lot of people don't know what to expect in the end times. The Most High want his people to know what is coming their way. You're not going to be raptured out of here at the start of the Great Tribulation. The rapture doctrine is a false doctrine. There's some Israelites confusing the day of the Lord with the great tribulation in Armageddon. The day of the Lord in Armageddon are two different time periods. If Israelites would allow the Most High through the Holy Spirit to clear up the lies told in religion, the spirit of confusion won't have its way in their life. Confusion is a spirit. Some Israelites need to wake up to this truth and cast the spirit of confusion out of their life. The Most High, the Father, is not the author of confusion. But God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. Ask the Most High for a double portion of the spirit of peace. That way the workers of iniquity can't control your beliefs. The Most High is decoding end-time prophecy right now in the awakening. Israelites, give the Most High the opportunity to tell you His truth. You spent multiple generations being indoctrinated in religion. Don't compare the lies told to you in religion with the truth the Most High is revealing by His Spirit in the awakening. The Most High want you to know who He is and what to expect. It was the Satans through the synagogue of Satan that concealed the truth. The Most High want you to be knowledgeable about your origin and what to expect in the future. The workers of iniquity conceal the truth to hide who they are, as well as to disconnect you from the Most High. The spiritual wickedness in high places purposely alter the scriptures and the writings written by the prophets of old to deceive you. The Most High warn us in the book of Enoch about the alterations, as well as in many other books. Give them the books of the handwriting and they will read them and will know me for the creator of all things and will understand how there is no other God but me. And let them distribute the books of thy handwriting, children to children, generation to generation, nations to nations. And now I know this mystery that sinners will alter and pervert the words of righteousness in many ways and will speak wicked words and lie and practice great deceits, and write books concerning their words. But when they write down truthfully all my words in their languages, and do not change or minish aught from my words, but write them all down truthfully, all that I first testified concerning them, then I know another mystery, that books will be given to the righteous, and the wise to become a cause of joy and uprightness and much wisdom. And to them shall the books be given, and they shall believe in them and rejoice over them. And then shall all the righteous who have learnt therefrom, all the path of uprightness be recompensed. Enoch wrote over 300 books. Where are those books? As you have heard in the scriptures, the Most High want his people to know who he is and the origin to everything he created. The confusion and misinformation about the beginning and end stems from the Satans who spread their falsehoods in the beast culture, as well as plagiarize the scriptures. The Holy Spirit that abide with us is responsible to bring all things to our remembrance. We have to look within to get the truth. Israelites, stop looking into the beast system for truth as well as for confirmation. You won't find the truth in the beast system. The truth comes only from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will reveal truth to you and tell you the things to come. Albeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. The people who rule the world right now with the Satans are liars. They are like their father, the devil. The earth is in the hands of the wicked. As a people returning to serve the Father in the spirit and in truth, we shouldn't look to the wicked for guidance. 
We must rely on the Holy Spirit. The Messiah prayed to the Father to send in his name as a comforter to lead us back to the Father. Israelites, don't fight the truth, but welcome the spirit of truth. So far, you learn at the end of the great tribulation, everyone must stand before the judgment seat of the Messiah to receive the rewards they have done for the kingdom. The Most High will evaluate everyone by their works. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. At the judgment seat of the Messiah is when the righteous who will dwell in the millennial kingdom will receive their rewards. Also, the valley of Jehoshaphat is where the sinners will receive their punishment. The Messiah said he would gather the Israelites and the Gentiles to bring them to the valley of Jehoshaphat. From the valley of Jehoshaphat, the Most High would judge all the heathens. For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. During the millennial kingdom, the Israelites and the strangers that cleave to the Israelites would dwell in the promised land. The millennial kingdom is when the righteous inherits the earth. There's a misconception about the whereabouts of the nations during the millennial kingdom. The nations will continue to exist. When the scriptures say nations, know that the scriptures is talking about bloodline. The people from the various Gentile bloodlines will be around during the millennial kingdom. The sinners will be serving the sentence they receive from the judgment seat of the Messiah in the valley of Jehoshaphat. The Most High said in the book of Joel that he would sell the children of the people who sold us. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians that ye might remove them far from their border. Behold, I will raise them out of the place whither ye have sold them and will return your recompense upon your own head. And I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the children of Judah, and they shall sell them to the Sabaeans, to a people far off, for the Lord hath spoken it. During the millennial kingdom, the children of the people who sold us as slaves during the transatlantic slave trade, their children will be sold. By the way, there's people still being sold and purchased in certain parts of this world as slaves today. Everyone who participated in buying and selling the Israelites during the millennial reign, they will watch their children be sold and purchased. Not only will the children of the colonial slave masters be sold, the Gentile heathens who held us in captivity in their land today and throughout history, they will become captives. The Israelites will rule over their oppressors. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were. And they shall rule over their oppressors. Everything the Gentile heathens have done during the times of the Gentiles will be reversed back to them. The Gentiles will live the life the Israelites that are scattered into all nations currently live. During the millennial reign, the Gentiles will become last. The Most High will flip the roles. The righteous will inherit the earth during the millennial reign, while the wicked will live in captivity and serve out the terms to their punishment. During the day of the Lord, a lot of nations will be destroyed like Mystery Babylon, the mother harlot. However, the nations will continue to be present. They will not rule like they did during the times of the Gentiles. They will become powerless. If the nations didn't continue to exist during the millennial reign, how can the scriptures be fulfilled? It's prophesied that the Israelites would take captives whose captives they were, and they will rule over their oppressors. Also, who are the nations Satan will deceive after he's loose on the earth? The scriptures did say in the book of Revelation that Satan will deceive the nations again. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. As you can see, Israelites, 
The nations will exist during the millennial reign. The kings to those nations will be destroyed. The Gentile nations will become lost. They will not have control over the earth. The righteous will have control over the earth. During the millennial reign, the righteous will live in peace and harmony, while the sinners reap what they sow. The workers of iniquity and religion use the resurrection of the dead at the time when the Messiah returned to support the rapture doctrine. Not too many people focus on the identity of the dead that will rise at the return of the Messiah. The first book of Thessalonians say, when the Messiah return, the dead will rise first. But the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. The scriptures in the book of Thessalonians confirm that the righteous will rise first when the Messiah returns. The scriptures went on to say in verse 17, chapter 4, that the people who are alive at his coming will be caught up together to meet the Messiah in the air. Israelites, remember, the scriptures in the authorized Bible is severely altered. The scriptures in multiple books confirm the Most High will gather us and put us back on our land. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. For lo, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, saith the Lord. And I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. The Messiah will rule from Jerusalem. There's no reason for us to be caught up in the air if the Messiah's reign will be here on earth. This is one of those alterations the heathens inserted into the scriptures to support their rapture doctrine. We are not heavenly beings. Adam's children would spend eternity in the Garden of Eden, paradise. The scriptures in the book of Matthew let us know at the return of the Messiah, the word of God would send his angels to gather his elect from the four corners of the world. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. If the Messiah will send his angels to gather us from the four corners of this world at his second coming, why will the people alive at that time be caught up with the dead that will rise to meet the Messiah in the air? Why are we in the air? The authorized Bible is full of alterations. The book of Daniel confirmed that the dead that is sleeping in the dust of the earth will rise when Michael stands up to deliver us at the end of the great tribulation. How come the dead will rise from the earth if they are in heaven? Shouldn't they be coming down with the Messiah from heaven? The scriptures in the book of Daniel let us know that the dead that will rise, some will rise to great glory, while some will rise to inherit shame and eternal contempt. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. The book of Daniel give us a little more information about the identity of the dead that will rise at the coming of the Messiah. The righteous is not the only ones that will rise. Who are the people that will rise at the coming of the Messiah? Most people are led to believe when you die, you go to heaven. When you read the scriptures, especially the scripture in the book of Thessalonians, it said the dead will rise first. If the dead was in heaven, how come they are not coming with the Messiah from the heavens? Instead, the dead that is sleeping in the dust of the earth will rise. Israelites, I promise you, if you allow the Holy Spirit to guide you into all truth, you can't go wrong. The Holy Spirit will expose the doctrine of devils, 
Look how the altered scriptures expose their own lies. We have to let the scriptures speak. The book of Enoch give us a lot of information about the afterlife. The book of Enoch let us know what will happen to the soul of men when they transition to the afterlife. Just because the scriptures in the authorized Bible say your spirit returns to the Father, it doesn't mean your spirit will be in the heavens. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. When Enoch was exploring the creation of the Most High, he came to a certain place that was described to be hollowed. The angel that was with Enoch explained to Enoch that the hallowed places he was looking at was the place reserved for the spirit of men who transitioned to the afterlife assemble. The angel Raphael said this is where they will stay until the day of their judgment. Then Raphael answered one of the holy angels who was with me and said unto me, These hallowed places have been created for this very purpose, that the spirits of the souls of the dead should assemble therein. Ye that all the souls of the children of men shall assemble here, and these places have been made to receive them till the day of their judgment, and till their appointed period, till the period appointed, till the great judgment comes upon them. As you heard in the scriptures, the hallowed place is a place reserved to receive the soul of mankind until the day of their judgment. The scriptures went on to say, the hallowed place received the spirit of all men, Religion said, you go to heaven when you die. The book of Enoch let us know the spirit of all men go to the hallowed place reserved to receive the spirit of men. Enoch saw the spirit of Abel crying out in the hallowed place. I saw the spirits of the children of men who were dead and their voice went forth to heaven and made suit. Then I asked Raphael, the angel who was with me, and I said unto him, this spirit, who is it? Whose voice goes forth and makes suit. And he answered me, saying, This is the spirit which went forth from Abel, whom his brother Cain slew, and he make his suit against him till his seed is destroyed from the face of the earth, and his seed is annihilated from amongst the seed of men. The scriptures describe Abel to be righteous. His spirit was in the hallowed place crying out to the father. Abel was killed unjustly by his brother Cain. The book of Revelation confirmed the spirit of those who was killed unjustly crying out to the Father. These individuals received white robes. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. When you let the Holy Spirit guide you into all truth, the Spirit revealed everything that was hiding in plain sight. The hallowed place Enoch saw was divided into four sections. Three sections was together. One section was divided from the other three. The angel Raphael explained to Enoch the purpose of that particular section and for whom that section was made for. Then I asked, regarding all the hallowed places, why is one separated from the other? And he answered me saying, these three have been made that the spirits of the dead might be separated. And this division has been made for the spirits of the righteous in which there is the bright spring of water. As you can see, Israelites, the righteous is dwelling in Sheol in a section that is divided from the rest of the other three sections reserved for the people who transition to the afterlife. The righteous is separated from the sinners. The righteous is not in the heavens. Religion lied to you. Religion have lied about everything. The rich man and the poor man's story in the authorized Bible confirmed the separation between the wicked and the righteous in Sheol. The book of Enoch said a bright spring of water separated the righteous from the other souls of men in hell. Abraham said to the rich man, Lazarus couldn't come to comfort him because there was a gulf between them. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. 
the righteous is separated from the other souls of men who transition to the afterlife and waiting to be judged. Raphael explains to Enoch about the remaining three sections in the hallowed place. Raphael explained one section was made to receive the spirit of the sinners that transition from the earth. Those spirits of men have not been judged. They will wait there until the time of their judgment. Another section is reserved for the spirit of men who cry out to the Most High to revenge them during the time of the Gentiles. The final section in the hallowed place that are together is reserved for the spirit of men who was in complete transgression. And such has been made for sinners when they die and are buried in the earth and judgment has not been executed on them in their lifetime. Here their spirit shall be set apart in this great pain till the great day of judgment and punishment and torment of those who curse forever and retribution for their spirits. There he shall bind them forever. And such a division has been made for the spirits of those who make their suit, who make disclosures concerning their destruction when they were slain in the days of the sinners. Such has been made for the spirits of men who were not righteous but sinners, who were completely in transgression and of the transgressors. They shall be companions, but their spirits shall not be slain in the day of judgment, nor shall they be raised from thence. As you have heard from the scriptures in the book of Enoch, the Most High made a hallowed place with four sections to receive the spirit of all men when they transition to the afterlife. There is a group of people that would not be raised from where they are. They are the people who was in complete transgression. The scriptures said they will remain there. These people would not be resurrected. The people that will be resurrected are the righteous as well as some sinners. The book of Daniel said the dead that will rise, some will inherit eternal life while some inherit shame and eternal contempt. At the end of the great tribulation, the sinners that was not judged, they too will rise and receive their rewards. Their rewards will be shame and eternal contempt. The righteous will rise and receive their rewards. There are the people the scriptures in the book of Daniel said will receive everlasting life and glory. Our fathers will rise also. The book of Luke in the authorized Bible said Lazarus was in the bosom of Abraham. Both Abraham and Lazarus was in the section reserved for the righteous. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Abraham and Lazarus was in Sheol on the side reserved for the righteous. At the coming of the word of God, amongst the dead that will rise is our fathers. Judah, the son of Jacob, confirmed this to be true in his testament to his children. Judah said to his children, after our redemption and his kingdom is restored, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob shall rise, along with him and his brothers. Judah went on to say that his brothers will become the head of their tribes during the millennial kingdom. And after these things shall Abraham and Isaac and Jacob arise unto life, and I and my brethren shall be chiefs of the tribes of Israel. I know a lot of sons of Israel in the awakening believe they would be ruling. Some believe they would have many women. They would have a lot of options to choose from. Israelites, the time have come for you to die to the lust of the flesh. No one who is led by the flesh would be in the millennial kingdom. The millennial kingdom is the time of the righteous and Jacob's reign. The scriptures let us know in the resurrection, no one will be getting married. We will live like the angels in the millennial reign. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be of the seven? For they all had her. Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. The Most High already set up the leadership in the millennial kingdom. The sons of Jacob, the progenitors to the tribes in the Israelite nation, will rise and be the head of their tribes. If you're from the tribe of Judah, our father Judah will be the head to his tribe in the millennial kingdom. The same goes for every tribe. Levi will be the head to all the Levites. Naphtali will be the head and leader to the tribe of Naphtali. The Most High already established the kingdom. 
Levi first, I the second, Joseph third, Benjamin fourth, Simeon fifth, Issachar sixth, and so all in order. And the Lord blessed Levi and the angel of the presence, me, the powers of glory, Simeon, the heavens, Reuben, the earth, Issachar, the sea, Zebulon, the mountains, Joseph, the tabernacle, Benjamin, the luminaries, Dan, Eden, Naphtali, the sun, Gad, the moon, Asher. Right now, we are a people that have zero guidance because we are living in a time of our affliction. We are a scattered people who have lost our identity. The Most High in the Awakening is restoring our identity along with the truth that have been buried with lies in the beast culture. Presently, we are not a people that is capable of leading anyone. We can't even lead ourselves. Our communities and households is a testimony against us. The Great Tribulation will sanctify our people alive at that time. One of the purpose of the Great Tribulation is to purify us. When the Word of God was flesh, His disciples wanted to know who would be the greatest among them in the kingdom. There was a woman who brought her two sons to the word of God and asked him if her sons can sit one at his left and the other on his right. The Messiah said to the woman that she doesn't know what she's asking for. And he said unto her, What wilt thou? She saith unto him, Grant that these my two sons may sit, the one on thy right hand and the other on the left in thy kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, Ye know not what ye ask. Are ye able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of, and to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They say unto him, We are able. Even the disciples argue amongst themselves about who would be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. The Messiah said whoever humbled themselves like a child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. There are many people who want to be in leadership position in the millennial kingdom. Those positions have been reserved for the people appointed for the positions. During the millennial kingdom, there will be structure. The Messiah's millennial reign is nothing like how the Gentile kings of the earth rule in their nations with their prince. But Jesus called them unto him and said, Ye know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they that are great exercise authority upon them. Israelites, Know that the Most High has already predestined the leaders for his kingdom. Even the word of God don't know who these individuals will be. And he saith unto them, Ye shall drink indeed of my cup, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But who sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my Father. The Father is the one that will establish everything. Israelites, know that when the Messiah return at the end of the tribulation, the scripture said the dead will rise. Know that the dead that will rise are the righteous. Our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob will also rise. How can Jacob reign without Jacob, the progenitor to the Israelite bloodline? Also, the sinners that died and was not judged, some will rise and be judged when they appear before the Messiah's judgment seat. The sinners are the ones that will rise and inherit shame and eternal contempt, as written in the book of Daniel and countless other books in the authorized Bible. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation and have hope toward God, which they themselves also allow, that there shall be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and unjust. For the people that doubt the book of Enoch, don't let the synagogue of Satan have the final say in what you believe. Nor should you allow the synagogue of Satan dictate what books you should read. The workers of iniquity condemn certain books for a reason. They don't want you to know the truth. They want to discourage you from seeking the truth. Social media may appear to be a place to speak and share freely. That is false. Social media is very censored. Majority of what goes viral is not organic. They punish and shadow ban people like me who's not afraid to speak the truth in boldness. I guess the Bible is a weapon of mass destruction when decoded with truth. 
the truth exposes the lies in religious doctrines of devils. The hallowed place Enoch saw is where the spirit of all men go to assemble until their judgment day comes. The Messiah made a promise to raise the righteous at the last day. At his second coming, when the dead shall rise, the word of God is fulfilling his promise to raise you up at the last day. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. The people that will reign with the Messiah during the thousand years are the people who did not worship the beast and did not receive the mark of the beast name on their hand or forehead. The righteous the Messiah will raise at the last day, just like you heard the Messiah promise to do for all who believe him. All the people whom the Messiah raised unto life will not participate in the second death. It's appointed for a person to die only once after that judgment. Therefore, the righteous that will rise will reign with the Messiah. They will not take part in the second death. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. We will dive deeper into the second death in the next part of our journey through end time prophecy. Israelites, I hope this truth have helped cleared up a lot of confusion surrounding the end times. The millennial reign will be the righteous turn to rule this earth. During the millennial reign, Satan will be bound. The nations won't be deceived by Satan during the millennial reign. Israelites, it's extremely important to allow the truth to penetrate your heart to bring forth change. The gospel of the kingdom that must be heard by all people as a witness to all nations before the end come is being fulfilled right now. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. Israelites, don't let religious doctrine that was meant to be a snare to you cause you to reject the truth. I know that a lot of the truth being taught in the awakening is the opposite to what you've been led to believe in religion. The truth is not going to support the Satan's falsehoods. Remember, the Satan's hide behind their falsehoods and take refuge in their lies. The workers of iniquity made a covenant with death. The time have come for you to make the truth of the Most High's words the standard. Don't compare the truth to Satan's deceptions in the beast system. The Most High warned his people to come out of her for a reason. The Holy Spirit wants to bring everything to your remembrance. In order to connect to the Holy Spirit, you have to look within. The kingdom of the Most High is within you. Neither shall they say, Lo here, or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Israelites, know that the millennial reign is not the end of it all. There are prophecies said to be fulfilled after the millennial reign. Satan being bound for 1,000 years is not the final judgment against him. During the Messiah's millennial reign, the righteous get to inherit the earth, while the sinners serve the sentence for the judgment written against them and their nations. Israelites, allow the Most High to order your steps so that you can be a part of the Messiah's millennial reign. You don't want to become a casualty in the sinner's rebellion. You will live your best life during Jacob's reign. You don't want to live your best life right now with the sinners. The Satans have been fighting with the seed of Adam from the very beginning. Don't allow the Satans to rob you of spending eternity with the Most High. Increase your works for the kingdom of the Most High. Allow the Most High to tell you how you can be a good servant for him. We was given salvation. Let us take advantage of the salvation given to us. The Garden of Eden is waiting for all the righteous seed of Adam and Eve. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness, and the power, and the glory, and the victory, and the majesty. All that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord. And thou art exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come of thee, and thou reignest over all. And in thine hand is power and might, and in thine hand it is to make great and to give strength unto all. Now therefore, our God, 
we thank thee and praise thy glorious name.